While some Europeans are drowning in an economic nightmare, others, to paraphrase Oscar Wilde, are looking at the stars. In Europe, we have always, despite everything, been impelled to explore space. But why do we do it and how much does it cost? We put your questions to Jean-Jacques Dordain, the director of the European Space Agency, ESA. Do you often look at the stars? Yes, I look at the stars. I find it relaxing. So you're not only a space director, you're a stargazer too. Yeah, I look at the stars. It's important. I'm a director, I manage space activities, but I still dream. So the principle of iTalk, fast questions, fast answers, we'll start with this question. In the context of the economic crisis in Europe, is it reasonable to invest so much public money in space exploration? I've read that your budget is 4 billion euros. Do we have enough money to invest in space exploration? Well, 4 billion euros divided by the population of Europe means 10 euros per person, so... That's still quite a lot. It's quite a lot, but no one in Europe could live without satellites, even if they don't realise it. Space is useful in our daily lives. So we're not really just stargazing. Exploring space improves our daily lives on Earth. Tell us a bit about this budget. Is it directly financed by individual countries? Because it's not just financed by the EU, is it? Countries like Switzerland and Norway also help finance the space agency, don't they? Yes, the European Space Agency is an intergovernmental agency with 20 member states. That's 18 EU countries and two non-EU countries, Switzerland and Norway. So the budget is made up of about 3 billion euros directly from member states and another billion that comes from the European Commission. Because we also work in their name, notably on the Galileo and GMS programmes. And now a second question for Mr Dordain. I'm Charlene, I'm from Belgium, and my question is, are there plans to visit any other planets as well as Mars in the coming years? Well, we have two projects to go to Mars, and we're preparing two missions to Mars, one in 2016 and the other in 2018. When we say we, you mean Europeans? Can we get there alone, or do we need the Americans or the Russians? We're doing it in cooperation with the Russians because it isn't a matter of visiting planets so we can be the first to put a flag up there. That time is long gone. Now exploring planets is done with international cooperation with all the other countries exploring space. We, and by that I mean the Europeans, we cooperate with the Americans, the Russians, the Chinese and the Japanese. So in fact we have a project that will put us on Mars with a mission that will take off in 2018 and it will be important important because it will be the first mission during which we'll be able to dig up the surface of Mars to a depth of at least two meters. Because if there are any biological traces on Mars, they will be at least that deep. So what we're looking for is traces of life, or whatever sort, since we know that there was once a lot of water on Mars, that there was once an atmosphere. So we need to find out if there are traces of life there too. And now another question on space. My name is Martin Lang and I'm from Scotland. And the question that I have is, um, there's been a lot of talk in the press recently about more economic cooperation between Europe and the need for more Europe. Do you think that's also true of space exploration and space research? Do you think that the future of Europe is together in space? Or do you feel that we can work more as individual countries? Do you have the same problems between your different partners about budgets as they have at EU level? Well, cooperation is always difficult. It's always easier not to cooperate. But at least in space, we can show that cooperation leads to success, since today all space activity in Europe is carried out in cooperation, whether it's in the framework of the European Space Agency or in the framework of the EU, or even in bilateral or trilateral partnerships between certain member states. There are practically no remaining national programs 
programs in the space sector because satellites cross frontiers and therefore give us a vision of the Earth which is much more global. And so international cooperation is essential and I think that the space exploration shows that Europe is a success. Another very simple but very important question. This is Mathieu from Marseille. What use is the European Space Agency in our daily lives? I said it was simple. What use is it? Well, it has three main uses. It pushes the boundaries of our knowledge. And when we look at planets like Venus or Mars, it's not really the planets which interest us, but the future of the Earth. I mean, the Earth is only a planet like all the others. And studying Mars and Venus gives us a lot of information about Earth. The greenhouse gas effect was discovered in the atmosphere of Venus before we understood it on Earth. So firstly, knowledge, and then it also helps us be competitive because it helps us develop completely new technologies, which allows us to maintain our technological competitiveness. And finally, it provides services to our citizens, whether forecasting, navigation and telecommunication services. And there isn't anyone in Europe who could live without satellites, even if they don't know it. So space exploration is very useful. And now a question from Kazakhstan. A question from Nerte in Kazakhstan. Does the galaxy have frontiers or is it infinite? It's a difficult question and I'd like your opinion. Since I was a child I've been asking this question, but until now I've never had any answer. A galaxy is a collection of stars, so of course it must have a frontier and a boundary. It is finite in the sense of not being infinite. But perhaps the question doesn't only apply to the galaxy, but to the universe, which is a collection of galaxies. The universe doesn't have frontiers, but it isn't infinite. So it isn't very easy to explain, but the experts tell me that I have to think of an ant which is walking on a ball. This ant will never arrive at the frontier, but it's on a finite surface. So I think that's how we should think of the universe. So now I want to reassure you that at least 97% of our universe remains unknown to us. Our knowledge of the universe is very, very limited. So what I'd say to you today is, don't quote me, in a hundred years' time. So I hope that at last Nerte is happy to have a proper answer. One last question on iTalk. And Sarang from Finland wants to know if the crisis will have an impact on the launch of Galileo, and if yes, what kind of delay it might mean. There will be no delay. We've already launched four Galileo satellites, so Galileo is a reality. Four satellites are now in orbit, and I have committed to launching 18 Galileo satellites by the end of 2014, and we're going to do it. The economic crisis will have no effect on this because the industrial contracts are signed and secondly the economic value of the Galileo constellation is huge and is going to improve transport systems enormously. So the economic value of Galileo is massive. Simply speaking, the economic crisis means we have to pay attention to each euro spent and that's what we're doing with the European Commission. So what's your real feeling deep down? Is there intelligent life apart from us, of course, somewhere in the universe? Me, I'm certain of it because there's no statistical reason why we would be the only place in the universe where there is life. You know, 15 years ago we hadn't yet seen planets outside the solar system, but now we're discovering a new one every two weeks. So now we're sure of it. There are lots of planets in the universe and I would be amazed if there wasn't, on some planet somewhere, some sort of life form. Almost certainly not the same sort of life form as we have on Earth, but certainly a life form. Yeah, I really think so. And perhaps they're even watching Euronews. Monsieur Dordain, thank you for those answers and thank you for your questions. We'll see you soon on another iTalk and many thanks to the audiovisual service at the European Parliament in Brussels. Thank you.